Hello and welcome to a structured parametrics video demo. Today I'm going to look at a portal frame building where we are able to control the height, the apex height and the width of the building parametrically. I'm going to run through it step by step. This is a finished example and you can see that I can control the wall height there. I can control the width of the building and I can control the apex height and the rest of the geometry will follow to suit. Alright, now on to the demo. Okay, so my setup here is Rhino on the left, Grasshopper on the right. I'm going to start off with a point. So I'm going to search for point. And this will be the initial point of the building. Uh, it's always good to set this as a variable that you can change later in case you want to move the building around. So I'm going to set one point there. It comes up in Rhino as the coordinates. I'm going to type 0, 0, 0. So now I've got a point at triple zero. And you can see it right there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the point into its components x, y, and z. So I'm going to get this deconstruct point component, apply that, join that up to the point. So now I've got <clears throat> my se separate x, y, and z components of that initial point. Next thing, I'm going to add a variable of the wall height. So to do that, I'm going to use a slider component. Search for slider number slider. I'm going to <clears throat> double click it and set it up. Call it wall height. Uh, I'm going to make it a whole number and I'm going to give it a maximum of say 7,000 so 7,000 millimeters. I'm going to set it initially at say, I don't know, 5,000 or so. Now to create the next point which I want about here as the first point in the wall, I'm going to <clears throat> add this new variable to the Z point of the original point. So I'm going to do, do that with the addition. I'm going to add the addition to the original coordinates of the Z point, and that'll give me the Z component of the final point. So now I can create another point with construct point and I want to keep the X and Y exactly the same but I want to use my new Z coordinate. So X and Y can be exactly the same and that's the new Z and there we have it, the new point uh, on the wall, the next point. Now the next step is to create a member between these two points. So I'm just going to insert a line. And I'm going to make it from the first point to the second point. So there we have our first. And now we can create the other wall if we have a width of the building. So again, I'm going to add another slider, which is a variable. I'm going to call this width. Make it a whole number, set it to a maximum of say 12 meters. <clears throat> set it to about 7 to start off with. Now I'm going to get this line and create another one with the move command. So I'm going to get that geometry to G. Now we need to transform this width, so again, so this time I'll make it a vector. I'll create a vector from an X, Y, or Z component. So I want to move it in the X direction. <clears throat> so I'll create that X, put that vector into there, and now we've got our two walls created. 
Now the next step is we also want to define these points at the top or bottom of the second wall. Now I could just put all that geometry into that move command, but it's a good idea to separate them out and then we can pick them up individually later. So I'm just going to copy and paste that one and move the bottom point. I'm going to copy and paste it again and call this the top point. My top point is there. So now we've got all points. Now I'm just going to put that logically and put that underneath there. So that's your top point, member and bottom point. Okay, now we can add the apex of the roof, which we need the middle point between these two top of wall points. So to get that, we're going to be using that point and that point. So if I deconstruct the second point, I can get the, the X component of that. And I'm just going to subtract the second point, the X of the second point. And I'm, I'm going to take away the X of the first point, which we know is this, which we know is this point here. So that gives us the distance, the uh, difference, and then I'm just going to um, divide it by two. Division up there. Now I can just manually set this as two. So now we've got the number and we can create a point based on that. Where our new X will be that halfway point and the Z we can get from the Z of this point here. There we go. Now, we don't want that apex to be exactly in line with the top of these walls. So we can add a new variable, another slider, and whole number, we'll call this apex height. And I'll set it to a maximum of, say, four meters. Okay. Start off at about 1.8. Um, now, we've set it at the moment the Z is equal, so we just want to add this additional part. Addition. So that Z, I actually want to add my additional variable. Give us another number and make that the Z. So now we can vary, oops, now we can vary the apex as well as the width as well as the wall height. Now we want to, the last point of the initial frame is to add in the two members. And for that we can just use the line command. So we know that point. We know that point. So we can Create a line there. I'm just going to control copy, control paste that. And again, we know that point, and we've got to get that point there, which is there. Link that up to there. So that was our initial simple frame. Now, at this point, I'm just going to organize it a little bit and extract these three points because we're going to use them later just to organize the script a little bit so it's not too confusing so I'm just going to make it clear that we've got this point 
I want this point on the left, which is actually all the way back here. So I'll just put that into a point there. Control copy, control paste. Next point I'm interested in was actually this one here. And the last point I was interested in was the apex point. Put those in order. So I've got that point, that point, that point. Just leave them up there for the moment. Now the next thing we can do is to replicate this frame uh, over and over again. Now we've got our first frame, we can replicate that multiple times. So to do that, I'm going to create a sequence and a series. The series starts at zero. Uh, that's the number of the, this, the step spacing and the amount. So to control that, I'm going to set up some sliders again. So the N, the step, is going to be the spacing between the frames. So I'm going to call that frame spacing. It's going to be a real number. It's going to have a max of, say, 9 metres. And I'm going to add that to N. I'm going to add another slider. And this is going to be the number of frames. It's going to be a real number. And I'm going to start, say, to a maximum of six for the moment. Set them to some values. And I'm going to put that into count. So now I have a series of 0, 3.6 meters, 7,200, and 10,800. So now all we have to do is move our geometry that we've already got into that command. So I'm actually going to create a collection of these lines, put them all into that. To do this, you just hold down the shift, and that's that. Now those two points. And I've got to find my other lines, which was that wall there, shift into there and my other wall which was somewhere in here no it was a copy wasn't it? it was a move it's that one there that's all the geometry then i'll move all that geometry into there and my transform is i've got to convert this series to a vector transform and i want this to copy in the y direction So now I should be able to, whoops. Right, now this is the first point. It's because of the way Grasshopper breaks things up into separate points. I'm actually gonna have to uh, graph this information. So that actually, Um, creates a list of a list and then we can apply that transform to each member of that list as you can see there so the reason grasshopper does this is that it's got four line components and it's got four vector cramps transformations. So what I've got here is it's it's applying the first vector transformation to the first line, the second vector transformation to the second line, etc, etc. But what I actually wanted to do is to apply the vector transformation to every single line defined. So to do that, I can use the graft um, command and what that'll do is it'll group those four lines 
into a higher level so that that vector is transformed onto that group rather than the individual lines one by one. And there you can see it's applied the move command to those lines as a group four times. And we can change the spacing of the frames and we can change the number of frames in our building. Now the last part of this simple frame will be to add the members that join up the apex and the top of the walls. So we know, already know that we've got our three points. We've got a transform. So if I control copy and paste, I know that I can transform the three top of height walls. I can transform the apexes and the other top of height wall. So with those three values, I just want to create lines between them. So to do that, I'm going to use lists. I'm going to because we want to create lines from each point. So if I have my list of points, if I shift that by one, I'll have a list from zero to 3,656 and I want to join that point to the next point. So what I'll do is I'll shift the list. So if I go to lift shift, shift list, I've got a list of points. I want to shift that list by one. Now I don't want to actually wrap it because, well, I'll show you what happens. So I will create a line with the shifted list from the original list to the shifted list. Now it looks like it's done the right thing, but what you'll find is that because I've got I've wrapped it, I've got lines, I've got one, two, three lines and a fourth line from the start to the finish. So if I turn wrap off Wherever it is, oh, here we go. Uh, set to false. I'll have three individual lines that are created and not one that goes across the whole lot. So I just simply replicate that strategy. In fact, I could just shift and add. Oops, no, I can't do that. I have to do it individually. So let's just do that. Um, and the shifted list is there. And again, geometry there and geometry into that one. There we go. So there is a basic portal frame um, where everything is variable and obviously you can export this into analysis programs or other geometry in CAD programs etc. It quickly allows you to vary things to see what happens and get the optimum solution for your project.